In this lecture, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to introduce implicit differentiation with respect to time. Now, in the previous lectures, we had been finding the derivatives with respect to x of something along the lines of x squared times y equals, say, maybe a constant. So our equation was 4 equals x squared times y, and this is the equation for the derivative using implicit differentiation. Now, we're going to be doing the exact same thing, but we're going to find the derivatives with respect to time. And so what's the difference? And you're probably wondering. Well, what made the last lectures very confusing is that you had x, and then you had y, which was a function of x. But now we're saying that x is going to be a function of time, and y will also be a function of time. So where the difference arises is when you'd have the derivative of x with respect to x, it was equal to 1, and the derivative of y with respect to x was equal to y prime. When you take the derivative of x with respect to t, it's going to equal x prime, and when you take the derivative of y with respect to t, it's going to equal y prime. Now this is using the exact same mathematical principles as we did before. The only difference is now where x was just a variable in itself, x is an equation of the variable t. So y, the reason that our y primes look the same as before is because y was already an equation of some other variable. y was an equation with respect to x, so its derivative with respect to x was equal to y prime. Now that y is uh, an equation of t, the derivative of y with respect to t is also equal to y prime. But our derivative of x with respect to x was just derivative of a variable. It's equal to 1. Now x is an equation of time, so its derivative with respect to time is equal to y prime. And you could have the exact same analogies if x was an equation to, say, g, and y was an equation of g. If we took the derivative of x with respect to g, it would be equal to x prime. And the derivative of y with respect to g would also be g prime. So this is why I like doing implicit differentiation with respect to time, is because it follows. The rules are the same. The derivative of x with respect to, the derivative of x isn't equal to 1, it's equal to x prime now, just like derivative of y is equal to y prime. So it's a lot easier to keep things straight, in my opinion. So let's do this equation here. Let's take the derivative with respect to t of x squared y. This is going to be our product rule, so let's write it out. We'll have the derivative with respect to t of x squared times y plus x squared, the derivative with respect to t of y. And of course, the derivative of a constant is always 0. So this is exactly what we had before, f prime g plus g prime f. The primes are the derivatives and that has carried through completely. Now, what the major difference is going to be is we're already familiar with that if we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of y prime, that's going to, or of y, it's going to equal y prime. But now, taking the derivative with respect to t of x squared, we're going to need to use the chain rule, just like what we were doing in previous lectures. So the derivative with respect to t of x squared this is the equivalent of saying f is equal to x squared, g is equal to, say, time on t, but really it's going to be x. f prime is equal to 2x, and g prime is equal to derivative of x with respect to time, which is t. Now, we're overlapping the same variable, so I could certainly understand why that's confusing. Oh, I'm sorry, this isn't t, this is x prime. Again, we're overlapping variables, so I can certainly see how this is confusing, but this is one of those concepts that just comes with practice. 
So now we're going to put everything into our chain rule formula, and this will be 2x times x prime, which we can now put back into our formula here to get 2x x prime times y. That all equals 0. So we just did the derivative with respect to time of x squared y. Just to really try to hammer this in, let's do some tables here really quickly. And you're going to see a formula arise very quickly as well. So we're going to implicit differentiate y, y squared, y to the third, y to the fourth, and then x, x squared, x to the third, and x to the fourth. And this will all be the derivatives with respect to time. Well, the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to y prime, of course. And we just saw before that the derivative with respect to t of x squared is equal to 2x x prime. So by the same analogy, the derivative of y squared would be 2y y prime, and the derivative of x is x prime. But we can go beyond that. If we take the derivative of y to the third, this is equal to 3y y prime, 3x x prime, and 4y y prime, 4x x prime. But why is this? I'm skipping steps here. Well, this is just the chain rule. This is the same as saying we have, okay, let's see where y to the third is equal to saying we have y of t. That's ugly. y of t raised to the third power. So its derivative is 3 times y of t times the derivative of y of t, just using our chain rule here, through y squared. Sorry, I'm making all these mistakes here, which is unhelpful. But because we've always been using y as y of t, it's assumed that y is a function of t. That's how we get back to the 3y squared y prime. So this is going to be a common trend. Whenever you take the derivative of a variable, it becomes a prime. And if you have to take, say, like, well, we did x squared. This is 2x x prime. This is actually the official definition of the power rule that we learned in the previous chapter. It's just a little bit more formally, we're just a little bit more familiar with it now. So I'm going to do some more practice problems, including how to implicitly differentiate sine of y. So you want to check in for those to get as much practice on this as you can.